readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Hello and well Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the books that we're hoping to read in August, that beautiful month of warmth, of the holidays, mm -hmm. sitting Hot outside in the sun, in the sun, drinking pims and reading. Reading, reading, <laughs> reading. So let's get straight on. Into let's just it dive so, into our August to be then. Yeah, we are hoping to do a bit of a Greek week in September, aren't we? Um, on the date of the is it the Battle of Marathon? Yes. The Battle of Marathon. I can't remember what it is. But talking marathon, that will be the first book I'll be reading in August. So me and we're going to have a few kind of Greek related books on mm. here. Ancient Greece, that is. Sorry. Um, not about Greek salads or anything like that. <laughs> we may do. Maybe. I'm Maybe. sure Joe Wicks has got a book. If about enough that, people want. Yeah, exactly. That. If that's what you want to see, let us know. We can review some uh, food books. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we're going to be reading a lot more ancient Greek books, uh, that historical fiction, fantasy inspired by that as well, so we can do a bit of a deep dive into the area. Um, I sound like Ofsted, don't I? <laughs> um, so, Marathon by Christian Cameron. You all know that I love Christian Cameron's work. We did have an interview with him a couple of weeks ago, and that was so, so much fun. Yeah. Uh, and he was talking to us all about um, his writing process, and we also did have a little discussion on this. Now, I'm sorry, Christian, for calling Aramnestos, Aramnestos of Athens. Big mistake on my end. Aramnestos of Plataea. Plataea. <sighs> sorry. The written apology will be found online as well. <laughs> and I will be found wanting. Um, so yeah, that'll be book one for me for August. And talking about Greek week, I am going to be following in Ed's footsteps in reading Killer of Men by Christian Cameron. Woo Thank you brother for giving me this hardback edition. I'm really okay. looking forward to getting into this. I love... I had to fight a hoplite to get it. You put your life on the line, but it's worth it for Killer of Men. Yes. So I'm obviously after uh, a few weeks ago you read it and said it's your favourite book of 2021 so far. Yeah. High praise and I'm sure that it is worthy of that. So I'm really looking forward to diving into Killer of Men by Christian Cameron very soon. And you will love it, William. As will anyone else who picks it up because it is a fantastic series. Now, I'll be reading or listening to a uh, non-fiction called Philip and Alexander by Adrian Goldsworthy. So Adrian Goldsworthy, again, another another um, author that I've been reading since he did a very, very kindly did a video for us yeah. uh, talking about his new book. He writes historical fiction as well as nonfiction. Um, but I would be diving into and delving and what was it you said earlier? Ooh, borrowing. Borrowing into Philip and Alexander, which is all about um, Philip of Macedon and his son, uh, the not too well-known Alexander the Great. Yeah, that Who? guy. Uh, Alexander the Great, um, so I think, uh, no I have no idea who he is, so, uh, but yeah, it's called Kings and Conquerors, it's all about how um, Philip, the, uh, the father of Alexander the Great, um, made Macedon a superpower and then Alexander the Great capitalised on that and um, yeah, took over half the world, so. Just a bit of land. Yeah, a little bit, a few acres here and there, Just so that'd be very interesting. I know Adrian's a great author and I'm looking forward to seeing what his uh, non-fiction is like. And the next that I will be reading is, it comes out in August, and this is The Pariah by Anthony Ryan. He did a Very short cool. little pitch of The Pariah in our August releases video, which would have come out a few days ago when you're watching this. So way back. Way back. And if you've not watched that already, go check it out. See if you're excited about any of the releases of August. I'm very excited for The Pariah. Anthony Ryan. He's a great writer. Papa Gwyn re um, read The Prior recently, mm -hmm. said it was really yeah. great first instalment to a new series. You don't have to have read any of his previous works to dive into this. So, The Prior, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you say, William, because I am I really want to read more Anthony Ryan. Uh, I loved Blood Song, that was amazing. Um, and I think if you say The Prior is excellent, as good as Dad said it is, then I might just jump in there and see what happens. I is think. it is, is um, Valen in it? No, it's New World. No, New New World completely. Yeah, oh, that's a good place to start then as well. Very nice. So the next thing on my list will be this historical fiction, fantasy, supernatural mix-up and mashup called Twelve. Um, it's set in Russia um, in 1812 when Napoleon was campaigning, trying to take over 
Russia um, and much much more. I don't know too much about Napoleon really I, I haven't actually read anything on him I have got a, a bit of a biography about him which I'm looking forward to reading as well but I'm very much interested in that time period at the moment and I and I remember dad telling me about this book um, basically it's imagine if there were vampires on the Rus on the Russian side um, and they help the obviously the Russians win the war or beat Napoleon. So I presume but that's what happens. Most people don't know, but with a twist. But yeah, but people don't know about it. So it, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, finding out what it's like. Dad said it's fantastic and he loved it. And I I do trust Dad. I actually yeah, I do yeah, trust yeah. him. Um, so yeah, Twelve by Jasper Kent. Uh, if you like the sound of uh, the Napoleon era, but with vampires, um, yeah, sounds right. There we go. Street, as well as mine. And this is one that I was meant to read a few months ago because one of my best friends, Millie, um, got me this book. Shout Writers out and Lovers. Millie. Shout out to Millie. She's a wide reader and she's introduced me to a lot of books that I have come to love. And this is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. Meant to read it a while ago and then I just couldn't find it, which is terrible of me. Hopefully, Millie's I'm ashamed. Not watching this. And it was behind the shelf it had somehow fallen and I was having a clear up reorganizing my books a few weeks ago and I found it oh, so this felt good. now this pure euphoria there is a specific place where this stays so I do not lose it again and I'll begin round two writers and lovers during August beautiful very nice and what else Ed well the next book I'll be Tell listening to is <laughs> like does he have a car does he read fantasy um, the next book I'll be listening to is, I believe it's called Midnight Falcon, which is another David Gemmell book, um, book two of, of the Regante. Um, so I'm really it's looking forward to that. Book. I love Sword in the Storm so much. Um, I love mm. the whole, whole historical kind of feel and the setting of it with that um, Caesar meets the Celts, meets yeah. the, uh, the um, Caesar's Gallic Wars. Um, setting, but with fantasy inspired as well in there. Mm. Regante is one series of four, but it's it's yeah. almost like two separate series so the okay. first two and then the third one dr jumps quite far ahead in the future what? so completely new cast still same historical setting yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about the regante the clan wow and yeah but does it like oh suddenly they're pirates no 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 but there is progression wow so this is the the yeah. second one is going to be the end of this kind of little segment regante just think the brigante um but yeah so I'm looking forward to that. I love David Gemmell and I'm really enjoying reading much more of him this year. And now I'm going to jump in and talk about what three of my Audible reads for the month are going to be. So during July... Oh, you're listening to them? I'm going to be listening to them. Oh, nice. During July, I read, started, finished, concluded the first Lord Trilogy. Read it. The Blade Itself. It, mate. Before they're hanged in the last argument of Kings. Yes. We had a review out for The Blade Itself last week. And as you may be able to tell from that, I loved it, and Ed has read these before. Because of the viewers voted for us to read Gerber Crombie and do reviews for each book and then rank Thank them, you. that is why we're doing it. And so during August, I plan to get through Best Serve Cold. Let me reach down again. The Heroes, some hand gymnastics here, and Ed, if you may, Red Country. And so this is the trilogy of standalones, isn't well, they're it? they're in the wrong order. There, there we go. No, William. I, I there, there we go. Oh, because the camera inverts it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So about that, I was just like, these covers, which one's which? And so I'm really looking forward to getting through these. And then I'll be reading the Age of Madness trilogy in September because the finale is released then. So this seems like perfect timing. Yeah. And I adore cool. three Abercrombie books a month. Uh huh. For, you for three done. months, three months running, three books. For five minutes. And then I'll get to the Sharp Ends short stories. Oh, you're not going to read that before you go into the Age of Madness? It depends where I'm on. If I'm on schedule, yeah, you then should. I'll fit that you in. You can listen to that pretty quickly. Oh, I might listen to it. Yes. That's a good idea. Let's add that in then. Okay. And yeah, so there are my three. And Ed, you plan to read? Yeah, I plan on reading. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I plan on reading <laughs> Red Country. So I've been rereading the standalones as well. We will be doing a review of each of them and then a spoiler talk at the end of each. What? group of three i reckon if we do yeah yeah if we talk about the the three of the first law then after that we'll do the three standalones then after yeah. that we'll do age of madness then everything as a whole Maybe yes we'll do a whole ranking which would be pretty cool so hopefully we have a chat about the original first law trilogy this month with the friends talking fantasy podcast yeah and then when we read the standalones as well maybe we'll have a bit of a larger chat with 
two or three others. Mm -hmm. That'd be good fun, definitely. Um, so yeah, Red Country, I know that I love it. Um, it's fantastic and it's just going to be a reread. I listened to it last time, so I'm looking forward to having the, the viewer experience rather than the audio experience. Right, I'll get into the next one then. And I'm going to be, this is going to be another Audible read for the month. And this is The Black Tongue Thief by Chris Fia Buhlman. Very good. Irish accent, um, because yes, he puts an Irish accent on for his main protagonist, doesn't That's he? That's right. Because Christopher <laughs> Bjorman narrates his own yes, he story, does. Really which is it. in itself just awesome. Yeah, yeah. It? And in my experience, books that are narrated by the author themselves are just elevated because of that, because Neil Gaiman, he's done his works, because he just understands everything that's going on, which lines are of importance, the subtext to all the lines, yeah. and bringing it to life, I think just comes that much more naturally, and yeah. that's to be expected, isn't it? Oh yeah. So if an author can, they should, and Christy Buhlman went and did it. You read this a few months ago, you said that he really did a fantastic really job. Yeah. So yeah, this is a recent release, came out in May, I think, and so... <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Not, not just May. Maybe. 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 And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this read, which is meant to be very it funny. Has a very cool cat in it. The next one I'll be listening to is The Cross and the Curse by Matthew Harfey. I am going to be listening to the Bernicio Chronicles one each month, similar to what you were doing with Bernard Cornwell. But so I'm going to yeah. be carrying on Bernard Cornwell in September. Ah, you're having a little break of it with him. Yeah. If you've broken up and you can get back together. Well, because <laughs> then I'll go to Audible. Did he stop replying to your emails? Yeah. Oh, mate. Happens, Broke me. Us. Happens at the worst <laughs> of us as well. Um, so, yeah, Crossing the Curse, book two of the Bernicia Chronicles. I really enjoy Matthew Harfey's writing. He's a great chap. And I'm looking forward to uh, carrying on with the Bernicia Chronicles and hopefully finishing them. Um, what? I don't, I don't I can't remember how many there are in there, actually. Quite a few. Well, you Quite started few. with book seven, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and he's got a couple of standalones as well. I think uh, he had another one. Yeah, he did have another one out recently, didn't he? Because he did he a video did, for, for Lord and Land, I That's believe. That's the one for Lord and Land, and it sounds excellent. I think it's about monks at Linda's Farm, so yeah. Uh, it's set in the Dark Ages. Uh, there will be some pictures coming up on the screen, I'm sure, um, of the cross and the curse. But yeah, really good. Looking forward to that one. Awesome, and the next I'll be reading is Cold From The North by D.W. Ross. He kindly sent us some free copies of mm -hmm. this for an honest review. So I'll be reading this first instalment to the Onyx Born cool. Chronicles uh, during August. And so thank you, D.W. Ross, if you're watching, for if sending a, this to if us. If a book, yeah, thank you. But if a book has a double-bladed axe on the front, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> you have to try it, don't exactly. you? Exactly. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to diving, delving and burrowing into this one. <laughs> and my next read of the year of August <laughs> will be Poseidon what? Spear. So I I was thinking, listen, reading just one of these a month, it's, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. So as a way to combat me dropping everything else and just binging them, I thought I would do two a month see how that works out for us um, it's a good compromise yes I, you know i do have other books to read for the channel and uh, you know other books mm. that we are looking forward to although you did say there is a plan b for your reading this month isn't yeah there? exactly so if i don't you know if, if i read this and think okay i actually need to binge every all of them then though the other books will be for another time so um, we will see but yeah poseidon spear book three uh, of the killer of men saga all about aramnestos and so the next read I'm planning on is A Fool's Hope, the sequel to We Are The Dead That's by chunky, Mike Shackle. I'm happy it is, because We Are The Dead was awesome. Good. I plan on doing this, uh, reading this in a buddy read with Philip Magnus. Uh, he's got a great channel, do check it out. He does some really insightful reviews, and his written reviews on his, on his website are really great as well. I'll put a link in the description below. A Fool's Hope, really looking forward to continuing this series in The Last War. And yeah, so I think the finale to this trilogy comes out next year. So that's why I didn't read it straight after finishing We Are The Dead. Yeah, yeah. So staggering it a bit, so I don't feel too sad when I don't have the next one to go yeah, on to. Yeah. But there we go. This is A Fool's Hope, and the title's making me feel a bit worried. Yeah. Because he is brutal to his characters. Is it a Lord of the Rings reference? Might be. Maybe. Maybe! <laughs> Oh, we know it's going to be there somewhere. And now I spoke to Christian Cameron recently and I said, Christian, I love uh, Killer of Men. What should be on my reading list as well after I finished uh, that series, the Long War series? And he said, have you checked out Stephen Pressfield? If you haven't, go and do it now. So Gates of Fire, I've heard amazing things about this. I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is the tale of Thermopylae. Um, so yeah, what's more to say? 
Stephen Pressfield's got a really good name in historical fiction and mm -hmm. just the writing um, uh, industry and yeah. uh, the circles as it is. So I'm looking forward to experiencing his work. Mm. And Gates of Fire is meant to be one of the staples of historical yeah. fiction, isn't it? And one of those like go-tos that we have Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia for fantasy. And Gates for of Fire for... Historical <laughs> fiction. <laughs> yes. I was thinking, how long can we leave a pause there? <laughs> <I know. laughs> And the next one that I have is returning to our idea for doing Greek Week in September. Preparing early again and I'll be reading Connie Gooden's The Gate of Athens. I really enjoyed The Falcon of Sparta, which Connie Gooden did. He does a very good spin on Greek stories mm. and his characters. I think that he's a fantastic author, one of my favourite historical authors out there. I've read a few of his other series, Conqueror, which is about Genghis Khan, which is Magnifico. Uh, and so here we go. This is slightly different, The Gate of Athens, and it's just going to be awesome, isn't it? I love it's got a nice Greek cover history. Yeah, it's cool. And the cover's great. It's a great author. Is it a lion? How many times can I say great? I think that's enough. Well, uh, what do you um, use when you put your cheese on your. This can be greater bowl. than the previous one, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. That was I'm actually. Awful. I think really we should good. actually be ashamed. <laughs> But there we, we usually go. are. I think that's the last read that I planned for August. Have you got any more? No, that's all me done, mate. What? Wow. It's almost like we balanced it out. Yeah. We didn't perfect. actually mean to, so perfect timing there. So thank you for watching this. This is our August 2BR video. We are slightly mood readers as well, so we try and stick to schedule. But yeah, as Ed said, it, he might ditch everything else for Christian Cameron's Greek series. You know it's going to And so it may fluctuate slightly, but when we do our August Reads video at the end of this month, so far away, maybe it would have changed slightly, but we'll try and stick to them. Let us know what you'll be reading. I'll put a link to all the books we've talked about in the description below. Yeah, you Many you can get from the Broken Binding with a discount code we've got in the description. And if not, I'll put a link to somewhere else you can purchase these books. Now, going back to our, our plans, Gerbil Combi famously writes that no plan works. So, I rest It's a case. fool's hope. <laughs> it is a fool's hope. <laughs> you have to be realistic about these things. And you can never have too many books. Or knives. Or forks. <laughs> or wives. <laughs> <laughs> As Ed said accidentally in the Blade Itself yeah. review. But there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great August of reading and everything mm -hmm. and just life. So, stay yeah. safe. Stay safe, everyone. Truth and courage. Truth and courage. The Brothers Gwyn. The Brothers Gwyn. Brothers Gwyn.